So either you're an individual who gets shoulder pain at the gym, or you're a physiotherapist who's treating someone who gets shoulder pain at the gym. Either way, this video is designed to give you some key tips to help treat those symptoms and get people back lifting in the place they love. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So today we're discussing shoulder overuse injuries at the gym, incredibly common amongst gym goers, fitness enthusiasts, and even me, myself. And so as a result, today let's go through some of the key ways to help those who are getting pain during their upper body workouts. This type of injury typically arises from repetitive stresses on the shoulder joint without sufficient rest or recovery time. These movements ask a lot of our muscles, tendons and ligaments to withstand the forces we're exposing ourselves to. Now obviously there's loads of benefits to weightlifting and we love building strength, but when that excessive strain builds either due to loading too quickly or repetitive loading without sufficient rest, it's no surprise that it leads to shoulder pain. So when we think about some of the key structures that can naturally get injured, we start with the rotator cuff muscles, including supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. And this is no surprise because the rotator cuff muscles are always involved in any lifting exercises at the shoulder. However, we can also look at the long head of biceps tendon as another key structure that can become irritated with too much lifting because of its role in shoulder flexion. Now, for anyone who experiences shoulder pain via a trauma in the gym, or if you're getting really concerned about shoulder pain that just isn't settling, we always recommend you see your local practitioner. But if you want some quick tips on how we can try and treat shoulder pain in the gym through overuse without having to stop going to the gym altogether, let's go through some useful tips. So as we said, we know that shoulder overuse injuries for those who engage in resistance training is incredibly common. And the literature suggests that 36% of all injuries in those who engage in resistance training comes at the shoulder. We also have a systematic review from Kio et al, where they looked at individuals who are involved in resistance training like bodybuilding, powerlifting, strongman, and CrossFit, and all individuals reported shoulder pain as one of the top three anatomical sites that they experienced symptoms. Now, extended data was taken on the type of injuries that these people get at the shoulder, whether that be sprains, strains, or tendinopathies, an irritation of the tendon. Now, we know that within weightlifters, powerlifters, and bodybuilders, tendinopathies are a really common presentation. The data shows that at the highest level, 63% of shoulder injuries amongst bodybuilders are tendinopathies. So let's take this opportunity to explore tendinopathies in a bit more detail, particularly what happens at a cellular level. So our tendons are made up of tightly stacked, layered collagen fibers. Included in those are tenocytes and progenitor cells that sit in between them. These cells are responsible for maintaining the stability of the cell and homeostasis, and they almost act as the shock absorber by facilitating repair and growth of the tendon when there is an injury. Now these cells can become stressed when we increase training volume too much or too quickly and this creates an increased influx of large proteoglycans into the area. These proteoglycans have been shown to increase hydration and subsequent swelling into the tendon and naturally this can be a factor in what creates pain when we then go to the gym next time or when we're trying to use the same tendons in our daily life outside of the gym. So it might also be really useful to look at this brilliant diagram from Jill Cook in her research, which describes the situation brilliantly. Now, a normal tendon can be put under excessive load, which turns it into a reactive tendinopathy. We may also have a normal tendon, which is unloaded, not quite strong enough, and then excessive loads get placed through that tendon, which again turn into a reactive tendinopathy. Now, if we don't allow for adequate rest and don't allow for load management within that tendon, it can turn into a state of disrepair and eventually into a degenerative tendinopathy. However, if we appropriately modify the load, either by changing the frequency, intensity, or just simply the weight of what we're lifting, we can bring that tendinopathy back into a normal position where we then increase the load gradually through correct strengthening in order to adapt the tendon and make it better at coping with those loads in the future. 
So therefore, how do we do this? How do we bring that reactive tendinopathy into a more happier, healthier state of a normal tendon so that we can make those future adaptations? Well, if you're speaking to someone who is a gym goer, I can promise you that telling them that they're not allowed to go to the gym at all is not going to make them happy. However, perhaps we can use the concept of deload in order to reload, reduce what we're doing in order to therefore increase it again in the future. And there are three key ways in which we can do this. Let's explore them now. So the first way could be modifying those irritable movements, and that might mean adapting the exercise to make it less provocative for the shoulder. We can do this by either decreasing the range of which we complete the exercise or shortening the lever. A great example of this is a bench press, where naturally we may find that individuals can bring the weight down to an extent where it irritates their shoulder because they're too low when they're doing the exercise on a bench. However, we could adapt this to doing the movement on the floor, on a mat, so that the shoulder doesn't come too low. And therefore, it means that we're not pushing it into that really provocative position. This is our way of deloading, where as things get easier, we can go back to the bench in the future in order to reload. Next, we can think about decreasing weekly volume. And quite simply here, we can break down the gym program into reps, sets, and load. So quite simply, can your patient reduce the number of reps that they're doing a particular exercise? Can they reduce the sets that they're doing? Or can they reduce the load, the amount that they're lifting? Or perhaps all three at the same time. This is a classic deload situation where we're reducing the amount of weight but still using the tendons in a manner that they can tolerate and is manageable for them. And of course, if you want to, you can always reduce the amount of upper body workouts that you're doing altogether. Focus on the lower limb for a bit. Focus on cardiovascular if you want, especially if that helps you psychologically from the activity of going to the gym without over irritating your shoulder. Either option is a great one. And our other consideration could be graded exposure in terms of a certain movement. So let's say, for example, you're an individual who finds that external rotation of the shoulder at 90 degrees is too sore for you. What are our options here? Well, we can think about doing something like a high row, where we have zero degrees external rotation, but we are purely extending the shoulder to at least start that movement. From there, we can bring the arm higher or add a little bit of external rotation to the same movement to mimic almost the external rotation pattern. And as this gets easier, we can move purely into full 90 degrees external rotation. Again, another way of modifying the movement to gradually expose your arm to what it feels comfortable with. So guys, I really hope this video has given you some great tips and perhaps increased your understanding of how we get overuse injuries at the gym. If it's helped you, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best updates. Remember, we've got loads of resources on our Instagram channel, at Clinical Physio on Instagram, and our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.